This is a standard 30 gram per hour Plasma Technics plasma block. They use these in various configurations, both air cooled and water cooled. They can make various amounts of ozone, but they call it a 30 gram an hour block. We're going to demonstrate rebuilding this block today. These are the tools that you're going to need. A large wrench, thermal compound, 9 16 wrench, 3 8 flat wrench, Teflon paste, needle nose pliers, American or standard Allen wrench set, and ceramic sealing compound. You can get this from us or directly from PTI. We're going to start by disassembling the plasma block. 3 8 wrench, the standard Allen wrench set, can be used to disassemble each one of the bolts. Now that the inside bolts are all loose, I'll start taking the outside bolts loose. I'll take each loose bolt loose slowly. That way I'm not releasing all of the spring pressure at one time. But this time, if you have a fan, that can be removed. Now the lid of the plasma block can come off carefully. Inside, you're going to have an O-ring that might stay on the block, that might come with you. There's going to be four springs inside. Pull those off, set them on the plate. Then you're going to have the pressure plate. The pressure plate is on top. Pressure plate with the dielectric. In this case, our dielectric is not cracked and in good shape. We'll set that off to the side. At this time, we start to disassemble the inside of the unit. This time, we're going to take the ozone outlet fitting out with our 916 flat wrench. Teflon spacer, or Teflon tube inside that goes from the reactor plate out. That can be removed carefully with a needle nose pliers. Next, it's very important to take this screw that holds the high voltage terminal onto the reactor plate out with an Allen wrench prior to taking the high voltage post out. Next, you can remove the high voltage terminal. The newer units will have a ceramic, a ceramic post that can remove with a three quarter inch flat wrench. The older units have a Kynar unit, as shown. Once the high voltage post has been removed, the reactor can be carefully pulled from the ozone generating cell. There's four positioning spacers that can be replaced or checked as needed. And at the bottom, there is a ceramic dielectric. You can inspect and replace the ceramic dielectric as needed. The bottom of the ceramic dielectric has a good amount of thermal heat paste. You would want to add some if it doesn't have enough. We're going to place this back on. At this time, we're going to take our reactor and we put our sealing compound we can take our sealing compound and place a small bead of sealing compound on every high ridge of the reactor. You can use your finger to ensure a nice smooth seal all the way across. Then the reactor can be placed into the ozone generating cell. Ensure that you're doing a good job positioning the ceramic inside of the spacers. If it is not positioned correctly inside the spacers, when you tighten this down, it will crack. Now we have the reactor back inside the ozone generator. This time, we can put our high voltage electrode back in. I suggest using a small amount of Teflon paste around the threads of this high voltage post to ensure you do not leak. When 
once the high voltage post is tight, you can tighten the small stat screw on the reactor plate to the high voltage post. The ozone outlet Teflon tube can also be placed back into the ozone generator. You can tighten this again with the needle nose pliers. The ozone outlet fitting can also be replaced. I also suggest putting a small amount of Teflon paste on those threads to ensure they don't leak. There is an O-ring on that seal to ensure the O-ring is intact and in good shape. Even with the O-ring seal, it's advisable to put a little bit of Teflon paste on the fittings, on the threads of the fitting, to ensure it does not leak and assembles well. When that's done, you can do the same thing on side. You can take your ceramic sealing compound and put a very thin bead all the way around on the higher edge If it's not smooth, you can smooth it out with your finger to ensure it is. Ensure everything is as clean as possible. I commonly will use a razor blade to clean off the ceramic so that the ceramic is completely clean prior to putting it back into the unit. Place the ceramic back into the spacers very carefully along with the pressure plate. If you did remove the ceramic from the pressure plate, ensure you put thermal grease, thermal compound between the two to ensure a good, to ensure a good seal. Place your four springs back on top. The O-ring can be put back onto the cell. Now this cell has been apart before, therefore it has some sealant on it. A new cell will not. I suggest a Teflon paste on top of this O-ring. A very thin layer. And you can smear that out with your finger to ensure a good seal and to ensure the seal lasts. These O-rings commonly are degraded by high concentrations of ozone in a situation where there is no flow or reverse flow through the ozone generating cell. This small thin layer of Teflon paste prevents this issue. The plate can be put back onto the top. It's very important to get your springs set back into the holes. You may have to shift it back and forth, wiggle it around a few times to get them in. Once that's done, I put the outside four screws in place. And I reassemble in the reverse order that I disassemble. I will snug up each bolt very gently. And put pressure on the springs gradually all the way around. Now that these four are tight, I can install the rest of my bolts and tighten them all down as I wish. It's all tight, it's all secure, we're just about finished. Before returning this unit back to service, ensure that you flush this with clean, pure oxygen for at least a few hours to dry out any humidity and any moisture that might have entered into the system prior to testing the ozone generating cell. Ensure you test the ozone generating cell also prior to, to putting it back into service. Mm -hmm.